I'm going to walk through an example of a phishing attack and show how Digital Guardian correlates activity in real time to identify the attack entry vector, activities associated with the attack, and ultimately prevent the exfiltration of sensitive data. In this attack, we will receive an email from a trusted source. That email will contain an Excel attachment that we will open. Excel will launch as expected, and that is the extent of what we, as a user, will see occurring on the system. But Digital Guardian has visibility into all activity on the endpoint, and we'll see that the Excel document runs a macro that makes WMI calls to launch PowerShell. PowerShell then makes an outbound connection to a remote attack server, pulls down code, and injects that code into itself. PowerShell is now used as a reverse tunnel such that the attack server now has control of my system. Let's take a look at the phishing email we received. We can see here that it comes from one of our coworkers, Pete White, and it looks to involve salary information about my peers. When I try to open the attached Excel document, then I get a prompt from Microsoft warning me to only open attachments from trusted sources. While I trust Pete, and even if I didn't, I kind of want to see what's inside this document anyhow. So we proceed to open the document. Excel launches as expected, and immediately we see a digital guardian prompt informing me that it looks like I've just fallen prey to an office macro phishing attack. We have the choice to either block the attack or continue. In a production environment, we would likely just block this attack, but for the sake of this demonstration, let's choose to proceed. Next, we get a prompt informing us that PowerShell, having been flagged as a suspicious process, is now trying to write a new file to our system. For this demonstration, the file is called phishingattackfile.txt, but this is only representative of an initial attack pulling down its toolset or pulling down its payload, CryptoLocker for example. Whatever it is, Digital Guardian can see and control this activity. Now this prompt is shown in real time. That means that the file has not yet been written to the system. We could block this activity, but again for this demonstration we will choose to continue, and as soon as we do, we can see that the file then gets written to the system. The next thing Digital Guardian sees is an attempt by the suspicious process to modify the system's host file. Again, this is identifying and halting activity in real time, so we can simply take a look at the host file to see its content before we continue, and then reload it after we continue to see the change. In this case, it has written an additional line that redirects my AB updates. What this is doing is crippling the existing security products on this endpoint. Next, Digital Guardian halts an attempt to access sensitive data. Because of the DLP side of the solution, Digital Guardian knows what is and isn't sensitive data. Now that this suspicious process is attempting to access classified data, we cannot allow that to occur. The only choice here is to block. As soon as we do block, we see a prompt almost identical to the previous one. The difference being that the previous prompt showed the attempt to access classified data by a process running as my user, whereas this time it is running as a system account. That means that this thing was smart enough to know it had been blocked. It then escalated its privileges on the system and tried again to access the file. But Digital Guardian sees it and blocks this attempt as well. 